Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. In this video today I am going to show you how I created this pretty painting and illustration using alcohol ink, an alcohol ink marker for the border, a pencil, paintbrush, a white gel pen, and some micron pens as well as my dry palette. And this will be done on watercolor paper. So take a look at the description box if you have any questions regarding the products that you see me use here. They'll be listed below along with links. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you in a moment. Good morning everyone. Jeanette here with Vivo Vintage Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this little either bookmark or painting using, uh, this was with watercolors and I'm going to show you how to do it with alcohol ink and micron pens as well as a white gel pen. But before we get started, let me remind you that all the products used will be listed in the description box, <clears throat> excuse me, just below the video, along with links. And uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your interaction with my channel is very helpful to my channel and greatly appreciated. So uh, I'm using watercolor paper for this, and um, I know watercolor paper and alcohol inks. Um, it's a very inexpensive watercolor paper. I'll list it in the description box along with the links. I think I paid uh, like $10 for a lot, for maybe about 100 pages. I don't remember. Maybe it was 50. In any case, take a look below and you'll, and you'll see. So um, the reason I'm using watercolor paper instead of photo paper is because this is really thick and it makes a nice bookmark or a nice painting. So um, I've got some alcohol in my dish and I'm going to use my dry palette. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with a dry palette, this is what it is. And I have a video which I'll link below as well explaining a dry palette and how to use it and how to create one as well. So I'm going to use um, I don't know, let's just dip into any color. And I'm just going to do this. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. You just want a little backdrop for your painting. So the uh, watercolor paper does absorb the ink very quickly. but it's still a nice effect. And of course you can use photo paper and your inks will flow uh, freely. But like I said, I like the way the um, watercolor paper makes a great bookmark. So since I don't know what I want to use this for yet, I'm using the um, watercolor paper. And I'm just dipping into whatever colors. It doesn't matter. Well, that's a little bright. <laughs> but like I said, I'm just going into any colors. And you can lay color over color. That's fine. Right back into that bright color. And now I'm just going to dip my brush into the alcohol and try and soften these colors a little bit. But that doesn't seem to be working very well. Once the paper absorbs the ink, you've got what you've got, and that's it. But all in all, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm going to dry this real quick, and I have my big blow dryer here. So I just want to make sure that it's completely dry. before I start using my Micron pens on it. And it's still a little wet, so we're gonna wait a little while and I'll tell you about this one here. 
So I did this one yesterday and I do have a video, I'll be posting that, but it's basically the same technique only using watercolor. And when you use watercolor and you wet the paper down, the colors flow very nicely on this paper. Even though it's very inexpensive paper, it flows much better than um, the alcohol inks do. But I, I still like the way it looks, so I'm going to go with this. And it's still wet, so I'm going to come back in a few minutes when it's completely dry. Okay, while we're waiting for this to dry a bit, this is the watercolor paper that I used. It's 50 sheets, and you can buy it on Amazon, and it makes great bookmarks. And if you're practicing with watercolor, it's um, not the greatest paper, but it's still okay to use while you're practicing and learning. And so I'm going re to refer to my little sketchbook here and decide what kind of flower I want to paint or rather draw on here. On the other one I did kind of like a daisy, but I'd like to do something different for this one. Well, that's a good option. And I want to keep it simple because I don't want you to be um, intimidated by the flower. So let's see, do a cactus. I want to pick out something simple. Not too many lines. And um, when you're working with these uh, micron pens on watercolor paper, you need a, a paper that is not very textured. That's really pretty. I think we'll do that one. Um, you need a paper that isn't very textured because the texture of, say, Arches watercolor paper can damage the tips of your Micron pens. So, um, again, that's why I prefer this paper for this type of work. Okay, so I'm not going to, well, I guess I should kind of sketch it out a little bit. So for this particular flower, let me make sure they're both in frame so you can see. Okay, um, we're going to draw kind of like a half circle for the very top of it. So just lightly sketch in your half circle for the top. And then it's got this other part here, which I don't know how to describe. So it almost looks like a flying saucer. And keep your sketches kind of light, although you're going over with a micron pen, so you won't be able to see any of it. So you're kind of drawing a, um, a flying saucer. And then for your petals, they don't have to be perfect. As you can see here, none of them are perfect. They're just petals. So um, start sketching in your petals. And make sure that you keep them um, layered. So there's one over the other. And keep them going in different directions. You don't have to do a bunch of them. And I'll do one last one over here. And then you want to make sure that you have some that are underneath. But first I'm going to draw my stem. I want it to come right from the center and I'm going to angle it a little bit because I like the way that looks. And then you're going to Throw a couple of petals underneath so that they're on the back side. They look like they're on the back side of the flower. 
And you can just do a couple of those. Okay, so now we're ready to pick up our micron pens. So to do this center, it's just a bunch of little lines and squigglies, no big deal. So I'm using a 0.35 for this, and I want the light to be coming from up here. So this area here at the top of this half circle is going to be lighter. And the rest of it is going to be darker. So you can see I'm just using some squiggly lines to fill in the area where it's darkest. And I'm just going to move those squiggly lines up that part of the flower. And as I get closer to the top, I'm going to make them further apart and even use a lighter touch And basically that's it. So now where you think you might need it to be a little bit darker, go ahead and add some more little squigglies or dots, whatever you're comfortable doing. But remember to keep some white space or some paper showing closest to the top of that center. And that's it. So now we're going to move down to this part here. And this is kind of like a bunch of little loops. So let me bring you closer so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So bear with me one moment while I try and bring you closer. Okay. So for this area, all I'm doing is creating these little loops. And I'm making them larger than I did in this flower and the, in the, uh, the other flower because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So you're almost making like little teardrops. Again, I'm trying to keep this very simple because I don't want you to be intimidated by doing this. It's actually pretty simple. So once you get that area filled in with your little teardrops or little ovals, whatever you decide to do, and I think this is an echinacea, I'm not even sure. But make sure you fill in all those empty areas. And then what I want you to do is just fill in the white spaces in between those little um, ovals or teardrops that you created. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Fill in what you can see and the rest of it will just fall into place as you go on. You can see I'm just filling in those areas. In between all those little ovals and teardrops that I created.
so it is a little time consuming but the effect is so pretty it's to me it's worth it and if you need any little you see a spot where you need one just add it in So I think that's pretty good for now. Now we're going to outline our petals. And I'm just going to darken the area that meets those little loops down here. I want to add a little bit more shadow. Okay, so now I want my petals to be a little bit thicker. So let's see what other micron pens I have here. I don't have a thicker one out right now, so I guess I'll use this one. And this one is a 03 or a 0.35. And I'm going to outline my petals, but I'm using a shaky hand. And you can make any adjustments to your petals at this time while you're outlining. Your pencil is just a, a guide. But as you start filling them in, you may decide to make some longer or shorter or even change the angle. Or you may decide to add one like I'm doing here. Just remember to keep some overlapping others. And these are the ones that are underneath. And then outline your stem as well. And then we're going to start shading in those petals. But the first thing we're going to do is erase our pencil lines. Now, when you're using watercolor, you can't erase the, pe the pencil lines, but with alcohol ink, you can. And this is a kneadable eraser. It's my favorite eraser to use because it doesn't create that residue mess that um, those square erasers do. And they last forever. And it's just um, soft like this. So um, it's great to use. I'll list those in the description box as well. Okay, now to create the lines, first, the first thing we're going to do is um, the area where the petal meets the stamen, we're going to fill that in. And my lines are very sketchy. They're not solid lines, kind of more like squigglies and little dashes, what have you. But that creates the shadow where the um, petal meets the stamen. Okay, so now that we have that filled in, I'm going to switch to a smaller marker, and this one is a 0 0.20 or a 0 0.05. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, let me move you out so you can see. Hold on. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. And you see these little lines here? That's the first thing we're going to add. All right, so let's get started with that. 
and you want to draw them in the direction and the shape of the petal. And they're very sketchy and trembly and dotty. And you can do as many as you like on each petal. And you don't have to go all the way down. And you can even start some at the tip of the petal and go up. But you see how I'm moving with the direction of the petal. And it's basically just like little dashes. Okay, so we've got those lines in. Now we're going to add the little lines from the base of the petal and the stamen down. So um, I'm going to turn my paper because I find it easier for me to create these lines going in the directions of the petal if I move my paper around. So let me bring you out a little bit more so you can see what I mean. I'm going to take my paper and turn it upside down and I'm putting my pen down right where that petal begins, right on that line. And then I'm going to flick my hand like that to create those lines and give me the shadow that I need at the base of each petal. So use a quick motion and flick your pen. And by doing this, what you're doing is making the tip of that line, this part down here in the middle of the petal, more narrow. So it'll be heavier at the base of the petal. And as it goes out, it becomes more narrow. So make sure that you flick your wrist. and that you keep your lines moving with the shape of the petal. And you can make some longer, some shorter. As you start to do it, you kind of get a feel for it and you'll see where you need to make them darker or heavier. I tend to make them a little bit heavier in the center of the petal. You can see this petal, I wanted it to go this way, so I drew the line to create that illusion. And now these little lines are going to go in the same direction. Okay, 
So we've got that in. And you can see how nice that shadow is created simply by flicking your wrist. So now if we go back here, you can see that I do have some lines coming from the tips. So let's do that now. And it's the same technique and you don't have to put them everywhere. You can just put them where you want a little bit of shadow. And again, keep them going in the direction of the petal. You don't have to do a lot of them. The ones underneath will require more because they'll be in shadow. So we'll be sure to um, add extra down there. I'm creating a little bit more in this area here because the petals that are overlapping each other, you want to create a little bit of shadow where one overlaps the other as well. That's good enough for now. So now for these petals that are underneath, you definitely want to fill in that space, make it nice and dark. But as you come down, well, let's create those veins in there as well. So I'm just doing the little sketchy lines. And then from the tip, I'm going to go up using that flicking motion to darken it up a little bit. And I'm going all around the petal. And I'm going to do the same from the top. I'll run some of those down a little bit but you want to keep it in shadow. So it, it appears as though it's behind the other petals. So they're going to be darker. So we're going to move across and continue with that same process to darken these leaves, uh, petals rather. So make it darkest top here in this area. And then start flicking away. Okay, now we have our under petals filled in. Now we want to show a little shadow where the petals overlap one another. So the way I do that is that I kind of darken that line of the petal that is overlapping. You can also do some cross hatching, but I'll keep it simple and just darken that side 
where the petal overlaps the other. Make it a thicker line. And I'm just doing some sketchy little lines. Some short little lines. I think the sketchier it is, the prettier it is, in my opinion. And then I did what looks like little um, drops of water. Let me see if I got that in frame here. See these little drops here, these little circles? They're just like almost like half circles, like little teardrops, but it's a pretty effect. And you don't need to add a lot of them. You can just add a few here and there. And they don't have to be perfectly round. They don't have to be complete circles. They can be just a little half circle like that. And adding a few of these creates more interest and a little extra detail in your flower. You can kind of elongate them if you'd like. And just stagger them around. Use a very light touch and that's quite enough. Now we're going to um, color in our stem. So because the light is coming from up here, there's not going to be very much light touching the top of the stem. So I'm still using the uh, 0 0.20 or 005 micron pen and I'm going to start darkening the top of that stem and I'm just using little lines but I want it to be very dark at the base of the stem here let me make sure I'm still in frame yeah I'm good <laughs> just never know and since the light is coming from this direction, this side of the stem is going to catch a little bit of that sunlight. Let me just darken this right here. And um, as you go down, you want the lines to be darker on this side, but further apart on the left side where the sun is maybe hitting it. But a lot of this is going to be in shadow at the top. so. You can see I'm just doing these little short lines. And that's all you need to do to fill in the stem. And for actually most of this drawing, I'm going to thicken up my stem. I don't know why I always get so narrow at the bottom and I like them thicker. And it's best to do less because you can always go back and add more if you see that there's an area that needs to be darkened than to add too many lines and then you can't take them away. So even where the sun is hitting it, I'm doing a few little lines. Going right up to that edge. And now I can go back and add some more lines to darken the right side of this stem. And it doesn't, don't make it a straight dark line on the right. Go into where the sun is a little bit. 
and that's it. I'm going to go back and darken some more of this area here because I do want to use my um, gel pen to add a little bit of highlight. So I want to darken some of these areas a little bit more. And that's good. I'm happy with that. Now I have my um, Uniball Sing Signo Broad Tip <laughs> gel pen. And this is my favorite gel pen. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few little dots where I want the sun to be hitting it. some highlights and then some of these little loops that I did over here I'm going to fill them in a little bit with the white but I'm not going to get crazy just a few and then I'll even create some highlights in some of my petals where the sun may be touching them as we get on this side there won't be so much and I'm just using those little sketchy white lines that we did with the black I'm using the same technique for the highlights and then even in the stem I will add some of these little white lines. Again, keeping it sketchy. And there you go, finished. You can frame this, you can crop it and frame it any way, any size you'd like. And it's really pretty. It's actually very simple. I do hope that you give this a try. Please uh, leave any comments or questions down below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.